Has anyone ever told you that the sound you make vibrates so beautifully in your body and the cavities just bring out the most beautiful overtones? Said no one ever to a guitar MIDI instrument because they all suck. Today I'm going to show you how to make guitar MIDI instruments suck less and we're going to be using the grain delay, we're going to be using some other audio effects in Ableton to make it sound pretty and dreamy and mm, mm, mm. So I have a fresh Ableton Live set open here and I'm going to choose a guitar. You can choose any guitar in Ableton. My favorite MIDI guitar at the moment doesn't exist. <laughs> Lol. Uh, something from a contact library called Jazz Guitar. I've been using it literally for about four or five years. I really like it. And it's cheap. So when you're in contact, it will be in your contact factory library. So when you're over here, you need to go to band, the guitar. The way I remember it is just guitar is often in a band. So there. And then jazz guitar. Anyways. Before we make the sound all cool, let's just get a chord progression going. If you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can just use your actual laptop or computer keypad. Make sure this little button's on. And now I can play guitar chords here. Okay, now we've got our basic guitar MIDI and First of all, the way I was playing that was almost like I was on a piano. And when you play a chord on a guitar, naturally you'll get a different voicing than a piano part. Now, guys, I invested proper in this YouTube channel. Proper. I bought a little whiteboard thingy with music notes. So that if you guys have questions about things like what is a voicing, da 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 da, -da I can make a little quick tip. But for now, I'm just going to tell you voicings are just the different distribution of the notes in a chord. Mull over that for a little bit. So the first thing to note now that I've been playing it like a piano, my voicings on the chords aren't like a guitar would have it. So the first thing that I do is I play around with the voicings to make it sound a little bit more guitar-like. If you can't hear your MIDI notes, then just click this little green, blue button. Fun fact about me, I regularly say green when I mean blue. And blue and I mean green. I've had it since a child. I don't know why. For instance, guitars typically have a more open spacing. So these notes kind of close together. So I want to make them further apart, more open, you know. Um, the imagery I get in my head is, is not child friendly. So I'm not going to use that analogy. So I'm just choosing notes at random and I'm going to click shift and the down arrow just to bring them down and play around with the notes until they still sound like they should be in the chord, but there's more space between them. So already that compared to... Sounds quite different, but yet it's the same chord. Uh, no. Now, you can work this out on a pen and paper using something like this, <laughs> but I'm not gonna. If you're doing more complex music and especially in classical composition, that kind of thing, it is quite common to work out these voicings quite meticulously so that each note moves a specific way to another note. Old school music, it's typically everything's kind of close together, but you know, nowadays anything goes. So like, if you want to have something like this and then You can do it. It might not sound good, but you can do it. Okay, and I've got a bunch of effects on it, so let's bypass all these effects. So the first thing I usually do with the Ableton Audio effect is I EQ things out. So I like to EQ out the lows because this is a guitar, it's not a bass guitar, I'm not using it for any bass frequencies. That's with the EQ. So 
So it's certainly more fuller without the EQ, but remember the guitar is not the only thing in the mix. So what I like to do is use a saturator. What saturators do is they add harmonics to your sound. Adding some saturation can often just make it a bit brighter and make it stick out in the mix a little bit. Another thing I pretty much always use with my guitar is... What did I just do? Another thing that I pretty much always use with my guitar is an amp and a cabinet. Now, I will admit, I do forget which way around these things should go. And so sometimes I just play around with what I think sounds good. So I think the cabinet is actually supposed to go first, but in this case, I put it off to the amp because I'm a bad ass crazy bitch. Please beep out the bitch. So with the amp, let's listen to it. Sounding a lot more electric guitar like. And the cabinet made it sound so much more mellow and there's so many cool settings that you can have a look at with the cabinet. If you want to learn more about the amp, the cabinet, the saturator, I'm going to make a little playlist over here. Nope. No? Here. Huh. And you can look at it and learn more about the details of these devices. So that's pretty much where I leave my basic guitar stuff. But y'all know I'm not a basic bitch. Can you please stop saying bitch on this channel? It might be offensive to someone. It's my channel. I can do what I want. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just want to well, shut the f up. Basic guitar is done. It's time for intermission because my GoPro camera is flat. It's so flat. It's like my hair. Okay, bye. So now we've got our guitar sound. We've got our guitar chords that we like. Essentially, we can bounce this out and have a guitar sample so that we can not use as many computer resources. As you can see, my CPU meter thingy is just like... <laughs> so let's make it easier for it. So all I'm going to do is duplicate my guitar track, Command D, and then I'm just going to right click it, freeze track, and right click on the track again and go flatten track. It's cool. I also don't need this stuff. For now, we're just going to be working with this guitar sample. That's nice. Whatever. Let's make it sound dreamy. And I got this tip from You Suck at Producing. I'm not saying You Suck at Producing. The channel's called You Suck at Producing. I'm not saying you don't suck at producing though. <laughs> so we're going to get our grain delay. If you want to know more about grain delay, you know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, click on the video, get your pen and paper out, learn a thing or two, and that's how you're gonna sprout, sprout your skills as a producer. It's gonna be stronger than Medusa, you're gonna be spitting beats like a tongue out of the heat in the Cape Town sun, I can't keep going. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the grain delay. By default, if you have the grain delay out, it's full on dry weight. So this gets me every time. Pull the dry weight down to hear your normal sample. So what the grain delay does, it takes your sample and chops it into a million little grains and it processes those and then delays them and stuff like that. So you can get a very interesting kind of delay. So what I want to use here is I want to use this pitch control and the pitch control changes the pitch of these little grains and it's measured in semitones so an octave is 12 semitones let's stick to an octave because otherwise things are gonna get freaky in here and I don't got no insurance so if I up the dry weight you'll hear what happens sounds pretty miff but you can hear that higher twang, it's taking the guitar sample, chopping it up and transposing it up an octave. Cool, sounds terrible. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let's filter out those really high frequencies. I'm sold, I'm sold, I'm buying it. How much, how much do you want? Okay, that's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. All I did is pull that frequency down. <gasps> Guys, it's time for a tangent. This is what I love about sound design. One thing can happen and it can just inspire you to just go crazy and explore. So what I'm noticing is this really cool pulse. Ding, 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 ding. So I would want to explore that further. The first thing I can think to do is take a shaper and um, drag it down. And remember, this is all from a MIDI guitar, just because we rendered it out into a sample. 
We started with a crappy MIDI guitar. All of this that I'm saying now applies to any sample. So you could put this on piano, you could put it on, yeah, you know what any sample means. So with the shaper, I'm gonna map this shape. So basically this is like a little envelope thing. Your maths haters, I know many of you are maths lovers, but your maths haters just stick with me. You come under my wing. If I click map, which I've done, and now it's flashing, and it's like, don't forget about me, and I'll say, fine, I won't forget about you, I'm going to click map, and I'm going to hit this frequency, and damn, look at that frequency changing. It's changing to the shape of, you guessed it, the shaper. And so I can choose my little graph picture down here, and notice how the frequency, the thing that I've mapped the shape to, changes. Whoa! Your rate, you can just make it slower if you want. Let's do hertz and then we can make it nice and slow. And the depth is how intense it is. So if it's not very deep, 1 over 12, a little bit. Actually, I don't want it that intense. Okay, you get the point, you get the point. I'm getting sidetracked. So that is cool. So now I've got my original guitar and I've got the guitar with this grain delay on it. So I'm gonna duplicate this guitar sample and take off all of my little fun things because I want my main guitar in the middle and I want the grain delay stuff on the side. And this is my normal guitar. I'm gonna put a utility on it and click mono. And then this other guitar, I can also put a utility on it. That's one thing I can do and I can increase the width. But what I'd actually rather do, because this is, a, this is a new device in Ableton Live 11, is I want to use this chorus ensemble. And it's got a bunch of cool modes in it. So I can use it in classic mode, which is like chorus, which will already make the guitar sample sound wider. It sounds a little weird. Ooh. I kind of love that sort of Beach Boys vibe. Wow, on the guitar and I'm gonna duplicate this as well because I want to use it in vibrato mode and we're gonna use another Max for Live device called LFO which that LFO and the shaper should be shipped with Live 11 so you don't need to do any special download to get it and what I want to do is just like on the shaper you mapped your parameters to another parameter on a device I'm going to map this LFO to the vibrato amount because it's going to make it sound like I don't want a constant vibrato because that's going to make me feel sick and vomit. But if I have it subtle every now and again and we can make it a bit more random, then, you know, there's just a fun little out of tune vibe here and there. And because this isn't the main guitar, it's on the side, it's going to just add a bit of warmth and life to the mix. So yeah, play with that to taste, but this is how we're gonna get a nice little width thing going on. And my camera battery is about to die again. Let's give a little shout out to Valhalla. I've been playing around with Valhalla's reverb. I have a demo, which anyone can get. You can just go to the website and download it for free. It's fully functional, except every 40 seconds it like cuts out the reverb. So, what ifs? So I've been using Vintage Verb. I really enjoy it. I think it's gorgeous. Take out some of the highs. Wow, it's just beautiful. And um, you know, with that, you can just add a beat. Let me add some drums. And um, once you've got this guitar drum vibe, you can add any lead instrument. I decided to add violins, and this is what we ended up with. Remember, I got my hardcore high budget little music theory thing, so if you have any questions, put them in the comments.